Hi, I'm Nick Maselli. At TD Bank, we believe all citizens need to be informed about the important financial issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Developing healthy relationships from the start, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, the heart of academic medicine, Johnson & Johnson, and by St. Peter's University, the Jesuit University of New Jersey. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, each year, one in four adolescents in the United States reports verbal, physical, or emotional abuse from a dating partner. Here to talk about safe dating are Dara Jaros, Safe Dates Counselor at the National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence of Middlesex County. Kristen Schubert, Senior Program Officer of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Julia Leonardo, who is Safe Dates graduate from Carteret High School, and finally, Siobhan Peratt, who is the New Jersey Executive Director of the Princeton Center for Leadership Training. I want to thank all of you for joining us. Um, listen, we're going to talk about safe dating, right? And uh, we're talking about a program called Safe Dates. It's a very important program, um, which your foundation is very much a part of, right? Mm -hmm. Let, let's define what we mean. You know what? Let's take a step back. Why is there even a program about safe dating? Because it implies there's a problem with dating. What's the problem? We have a big problem in this country, Steve. Um, intimate partner violence affects everybody in this country. It used to be called domestic violence. And I was shocked to find out that um, the highest rates of intimate partner violence are among our 16 to 24 year olds. So we as a philanthropy, we're very much dedicated that's to- the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Yeah, that's right. Um, improving the health and healthcare of everyone in this country. And we took a look and we said, um, intimate partner violence leads to a whole host of problems in someone's life. Injury, of course, and death is the immediate one, but we know that kids who experience this in their dating relationships have higher rates of substance abuse, unplanned pregnancy, and suicide, mm -hmm. never mind uh, the wear and tear of an unhealthy relationship, what that can do to you over the life over your lifetime. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to start early, uh, before kids started dating, say, what can we do to help kids get off to the right start and have a healthy relationship? So what did you do? Is that what the Safe Dates Initiative is? Yeah. As is. I understand, it's a 10-part program, right? Yeah. It's for high school and middle school students. You're a graduate of the program, right? Yes. Yeah. What is the program itself? Describe it. Um, and I'll let my, the experts here talk more about it. But Safe Dates, when we looked across the country, we said, what's out there for kids? Safe Dates is really one of the only evidence-based programs that's out there um, to help teach kids the skills and the warning sure. signs um, about uh, unhealthy and healthy relationships. Yeah, break it down. What is it? It's an activity-based program. It gets the students involved to be part of this class over 10 weeks in which they do activities and they're learning from it. These are learned Give us behaviors. Some make it make it very visceral for us. Sure. So one example is we read a story of a couple that's involved in an abusive relationship in which the girl is the aggressor. And a lot of times people will question, well, why do they break up? Why do they get back together? Why is she going back? Why is he going back? So we read the story and I pause throughout it. And the kids have the opportunity to walk to one side of the room or the other, depending on whether they want to stay in this relationship or they want to break up. But the way the dynamics of the story is, it makes them constantly question. And in the end, it turns out that the girl has a father who's abusive, and that's why she has these behaviors towards the boyfriend. So the, the kids have to answer that question, would you still stay? So they're walking around the classroom, they're thinking, they're hearing an example of a story that's relatable to them. So it's interactive. When you were in those programs, do you remember exactly what's being talked about? Yes. Did you feel any peer pressure as to which side of the room you were going to be on? No. Stay or not stay? No. You had a sense of what you wanted to do? Yes. Why the, did you even get into the program? At first it was um, not mandatory, but we had to take the class. It was in our schedule. At Carteret High School? Yes. It was okay. once a week, I want to say. Derek mm -hmm. came in and we took the, that class time out and 
it just helped, I know, a lot of me and my friends to realize, you know, the signs of an abusive relationship, how it starts, how it progresses, how to get out of it when you need to get out of it. So it, it helps develop, I guess, what to think and how to think of a healthy relationship. Well, let me, let me ask you, before I continue the discussion, I'm curious about this. How old are you? 19. How much more confident do you feel today because you've gone through the Safe Dates program about how you would handle any situation where a, an abusive situation would pop up? How much more confident do you feel today? I feel a lot more confident because I know what to look for. I know the red signs. I know how to get out of it and who to turn to than what I did my sophomore and junior year. So going through the program, you learn how to step away from it. You mm -hmm. learn who to go to and how to approach it other than to stay in it and get hurt in the mm -hmm. long run. We so. scheduled it through the health classes, so it was mandatory that one grade level, an entire grade level, had to take part in this class. And when you have a 10-week span of going in every week into that classroom, they are bound to absorb this information. Kids are seeing reality shows mm -hmm. in which horrible relationships are constantly displayed as if that is the norm. And no one ever takes the time to explain to them what is normal. That jealousy is a normal human emotion that we all experience. There's nothing to be ashamed about. But when you feel jealousy in your relationship, how do you communicate with your partner about that? Instead of you know, becoming aggressive about it or taking a different approach that you know, turns into abuse. So they absolutely take information from this class. So let me ask you, what are some of the reasons for, and I'm going to assume that there's an increased number of incidents. I mean, you talked about the one in four in relationships that are connected to abuse. Assume for a second there is an increase. Do we know why? I think it's really due to a variety of factors. I think, you know, as Julia was pointing out, just recognizing what constitutes dating violence um, is a huge reason. I think many people um, obviously equate sort of the physical violence as abuse, but when it comes to sort of the more emotional abuse or even sexual abuse within relationships, oftentimes people think, oh, that's not really mm -hmm. anything to be concerned about. This is, um, you know, this is just a possessive person. This is how my partner demonstrates love to me. And so I think when we see these increases, in large part, it's around just an increase of awareness. I think dating violence for so long um, has been sort of this hush hush like that happens to those people right. not in my community not in my school and so I think when we really sort of um, lift unlift that veil and really enable students as well as faculty members and um, others in the school community to really to sort of take a step back and think about this issue we see oh my goodness it is happening mm -hmm. I've been turning a blind eye you yeah, know what throughout exactly. this program we're going to be putting up a couple of websites the uh, loveisnotabuse.com website and the startstrongparents.org website. Um, but this whole question of how we define abuse, let's expand the definition. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. It's interesting, you know, Julia and, and Dara just said, when I go out and I speak um, to a variety of audiences on this issue, I always start with the first question. How many of you know of someone and this is our adult audiences, right? Know of someone who's had an unhealthy relationship. Might not be abusive, but unhealthy. Inevitably, about 100% of the audience will yeah. raise their really hand. 100%. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think even when you ask yourself that question, oh yeah, there was so-and-so, didn't think they were in a good relationship. And then I ask, now how many of you, when you were young, your parents pulled you aside and had a conversation about what is a healthy relationship? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm sorry maybe, for maybe I'll get, maybe I'll get twenty percent of those really, you know, <laughs> stellar, evolved. right? Yeah. Evolved. Who did that? Right. right. Who does right. that? Right. 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 Exactly. So, so what, what, what we're trying okay, to sorry. do now uh, with with our work in New Jersey and our work nationwide really is to on lift up the veil, start mm -hmm. a conversation. So the work with Safe Dates is not just about Julia and her peers, mm -hmm. but it's also about all of us. Because mm -hmm. she comes home, right? And you say, hey, mom and dad, hey, so and so, this is what I'm talking about. Let's start to have a dialogue in this country about this issue. Oh, the the way. Are we ready? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Are we ready to have 
this discussion. Oh, yeah. Are we really? No, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. No, 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 I, no, I did not say. I did not question whether this conversation was needed. How ready are we to have such a candid dialogue as to what abuse really means? <laughs> and by the way, who is in on this conversation? Are we talking about um, us talking to our kids? Some of us talking to our parents? Or saying, okay, listen, forget about our parents. It's too late for that. I mean, what, who are we talking about being in on this? I mean, number one, it has to come from the parents. They're the primary influence. But we have unfortunately, to start it. yes, it's not happening in every home. And a lot of parents are leaving education of every kind up to schools. Mm -hmm. So schools are taking on this role that they're not only teaching the math, the English, the science, but they're teaching life skills. And this is an important one because if it's not taught, we're victimizing a lot of people. And the great thing about this curriculum is it addresses a victim, it addresses the potential perpetrator, and it also helps bystanders. The people who in that room and raise their hand and say, yeah, I know they have an unhealthy relationship. Well, then what do you do about yeah, okay, it? Okay, but, but right. what does the Safe Dates program say if you are to use your words, Sarah, mm -hmm. a bystander. Mm -hmm. What does the by, because there are a lot, there are millions and millions of bystanders. What do we do in those situations? What should we be doing? Mm -hmm. Is it our business if a peer, a close friend, I mean, should we be getting involved and what does that mean? Well, I think the pro what's so great about the program is it offers a range of options for students. Again, because with our work with Safe Dates, and I think everyone around here, um, at the school level, you know, the number one thing that we offer for that bystander is to turn to an adult in the school, whether that's a faculty member or a school counselor or an administrator, to make sure they know this is who you can go to regarding these issues. I think we also try very hard to put them in touch with resources within their communities that they can turn to as well. And so I think it's not necessarily you have to go and intervene in that moment, but maybe going, turning to another adult, seeking advice, even going to that friend and speaking with that friend, hey, I saw this happen. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about that? Has that happened to you before? Be, be specific. Mm -hmm. so what let's would they say, see? So let's say if they're in the hallway at school and um, there's a couple and one of the um, individuals you know, pulls the other to a side and starts yelling at them or there's um, some, some physical contact or even just, again, the yelling because that emotional abuse is really important as well. So they might see that. I mean, that's something that happens mm -hmm. um, not only in schools but, you know, out in a variety of public places. And so it's really, hey, are you okay? What, you know, has that happened to you before? Mm -hmm. You know, let's talk about this. Let's, let's talk to someone else about this that maybe has a little bit more expertise. We actually give out a paperwork of guidelines that the students can take with them and it asks them to call attention to their friend's behavior. Steve, what do you think your girlfriend felt like when you said that name to her or when you pushed her? How do you think she felt about that? How do you think that was the ask, right choice? Say, it's none of your business. Um, Stay at, that's our relationship. What does that have to do with you? But teens date differently than adults. Teens date in a social atmosphere. They're very rarely going back to someone's house where they're alone. So all right. of these behaviors, these abusive, harmful behaviors are happening around other people. And enough has got to be enough that kids really do need to advocate for themselves okay, but and others. Devil's advocate, mm -hmm. which is my role here, mm -hmm. which is obviously what I would not say to you. <laughs> I would hope I would not. What about the thinking that many people have that if I were to intervene and just say, how do you think she felt when you did that, that they would, quote, unquote, make it worse for her? Do you ever think about that? And by the way, I don't know if that's true or not, mm -hmm. but I know that that's mm -hmm. a perception that some have, that if you were to say something to the guy, let's assume it's a situation where a guy is being abusive to a friend of yours, mm -hmm. an acquaintance, someone you care about, someone who matters, and you were to interview and, and say something to him, and he got angry, and it made it worse for it. That's not what you would want. So what the heck do you do in a situation like that? At <clears> that <throat> point, if, if it got worse for her, either 